Here is the scanned image of the Pennsylvania Dower Chest in the book by Lester Margon titled Construction of American Furniture Treasures. So I've imported the image that it was scanned uh, out of the book and I've sized the image and then I scaled it up by a factor of 10. That helps a little bit in doing the very small arcs to reproduce these shapes of decorations of the painting. So the, the times 10 scaling does improve that. I've also set a style that's a little bit different when I do this type of tracing over. In the style that I've used here, I've, let me just say edit, and then you can see I've set profiles at two which makes the the traced over edges uh, fatter, because I usually use just a profile of one, and then also I've checked a color all the same and in this case I set it to red. So that makes it easier to see what I've already traced over and you can see that I've already started. Since this is a symmetrical painting then I only have to trace over one half of the symmetry and I've drawn a vertical line through that center line and then I um, also drew the outline of this pot and I've done one scroll thing here. There's obviously a lot of arc tool arcs in this in this kind of a image and you can use add-ons and plug-ins and so on that uh, may you may feel more comfortable with but I typically just use the arc tool when doing these kinds of uh, traceovers and I'll show you how I manipulate the arc tool to uh, to do these these shapes I'll start with this little uh, stalk of greenery coming out of this pot here and pick the arc tool and and come down here and I should be able to do that with one one arc and that looks that looks good then there's a little bit it's hard to see it but I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bulge here at the end and then come back with an arc tool that, that, with an arc that looks a little bit like this. Now, it's hard to tell, but there are some little jagged leaflet type of things that are coming out of this thing. And I'll just, rather than tracing over in any way, I'm just going to plug in some appendages here. Uh, so I'm taking some liberties, as you can tell, and, and, and I, that's fine because when I paint this, I'm taking some liberties as well in, in the actual painting. So even though I'll, I'll use this as a template for the painting, um, I'll be making some some uh, ad libbing, so to speak, as I go. Now this stalk, I've drawn the center line, but there's a stalk here, and that stalk I know is going to be a brown color, and I'm going to bring it up here and thin it down. It'll be a tapered stalk, and I'm going to taper it at about right 
here and go over and close that up. Then it's it also it's difficult to see how this flower works. There's one, two, three, four petals and then there's some things. It's, uh, it's some of these figures were not very suitable for scanning but I scanned it a high dots per inch about I think it was 1200 dots per inch so I got everything that I could out of this this picture and I'm I will need to just kind of draw in what I want to what I think is going to look okay and I'm going to start with a petal in the in the middle here and come down and and maybe uh, have something like that and then there's going to be another petal that comes out in this area and I'll round that over but say like that and then come down with an arc tool that perhaps comes in like that. Uh, another petal on this flower that comes out maybe looking something like this and coming back in and and then I'm just going to use this from here starting point and come now I can back up here on the arc tool notice that I backed up on it so there'll be a little bit of a appendage here that I need to delete later but I can get that tangency anywhere along that arc and I wanted to tighten it up here maybe about like that and then I will delete this extra little bit here and come in with uh, something that maybe looks like that. Now as I look at that I need well I also need these little V's that come up here and then there's another V that comes up here um, so I make I may make some adjustments later on something like that, but it's good for now. Now here's a little scroll work here, and I'm going to start a arc about like this, stop it there, and then come around, and stop it there, and come around. These radii, radii get tighter and tighter as you go into the into the scroll. Now, what happened here? I lost the. I want to come in about like about like that. It, although it looks like I didn't touch. There we go. Maybe something like that. Then there's a stem that takes on another flower that starts about right here. And I'll just pull that into place. And, and this stem has a thickness here that maybe something along those lines um, now usually there's a little bit of a 
I'm going to come across maybe about like that to end the stem and no, I'm going to need to go uh, a little bit further with that. So I'm going to come out maybe about that far with the with the stem. And then I'll start these little petals again. And an arc that maybe looks something like that. The petal comes out maybe about there and comes back in maybe something like that. Another petal right in here. I'll probably have to edit that one. I'm looking for that tangent cyan color and coming back maybe like that. Um, here we've got a petal that's coming back here. And where's my tangent? And we got a, another one that comes out here. And the, you get the idea there on the flowers and the petals. There's a lot of these scrolls uh, that are all different sizes. And it takes a little, I find that it just takes a little practice to know where you where you end a, a, a segment, an arc segment. See, if I go, well, actually, that, that one keeps going pretty good for a half a circle there. So I'll click about there and then get the tangency. Now, where do you, where do you stop? And that's the, comes with a little bit of practice on, on, but it, it doesn't, this isn't critical because when I paint this, I'm going to be using, I'm not going to be strictly following where these, these marks are. Uh, I'll take liberties with that. And... and so on. So you get the idea. Sometimes I need to turn on x-ray because that'll let me see inside this pot for example there's a there's a little let me see if I can do an offset here there's a little offset but I'm from here to here to here to here let me see if I can get a little offset on this. Maybe something like that. And then an arc shape that comes in. Let's see if I can do it with one arc. Yeah, I think so. So there's the handle then. 
uh, let me turn off the uh, x-ray and then actually I don't need the face and I can get rid of the faces uh, so after I copy after I print after I draw over trace over all of these shapes then I'll copy that I'll make it a group probably and then copy it I'll do something like this I'll do a select box around whatever I've traced over I'll uh, I guess I'll make it a group just to make sure that I uh, it keeps it all together safely then I can make a use the move tool with the and then flip it on the red axis flip along red bring it back and uh, get the whole picture and then when I'm done I'll scale that back 0.1 times, one tenth the size it is now, and and make that full size. Print it out full size on uh, multiple sheets. It'll take multiple sheets, maybe two or three sheets of eight and a half by eleven, and I'll tape that together. Make a template out of it and uh, put some tracing paper underneath and, and uh, trace over the lines to make the marks, make the design on the actual uh, dower chest wood. And the wood is all painted black so I use a tracing paper that is uh, produces a red when I uh, mark over these this design it produces a red design on on the black face and then I can use that for painting the various colors